Welcome to Fairview Baptist Church's morning worship service. We are glad that you are here and know that the Lord will bless you as we worship today together. Today, we're going to honor our graduates and we'll be seeing a video just a little bit later on. But, but let's all continue just to worship and to uplift the name of the Lord. So if you would, we're going to start this morning with our worship hymn. <clears throat> you for this day and this opportunity of service lord we pray for our church we pray for the uh, members of our community lord god we lift up today the the graduates of 2020 not just at uh, fairview baptist lord but in our county and our in our state and our country lord we just pray for them we pray that we will always keep them in our hearts and in our minds as they start their life anew outside of high school lord Lord, we pray for conviction for our souls. Lord, we pray for the lost in this world who need you. All these things we ask in the precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, welcome. Galatians 6, 9 makes this promise. It says, Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, I believe this verse applies very much so to Fairview. I want to thank you all for your well-doing as during these uncertain times as you continue to work and continue to minister wherever you are and wherever you go. I know that you have not and that you will not faint as we continue to serve the Lord faithfully in the name of Jesus Christ. And this verse then promises that as we do that, that we shall then reap God's reward as he gives it to us. That is his promise. And I know that we shall cling to it. Uh, and because of, we will continue, I'll try that again, because of that, God shall reap the reward. That's his promise. Now we're going to continue our online services as the deacons and I continue to prayerfully seek God's direction on how Fairview will be able to open with the health and safety of all of our members. I know that's your concern as well. We will open as the guidelines allow us to manage our seating and our social distancing. And I, I pray for God's leading in that as I know that you are with me in that as well. I thank you for your continued support of praying at 707 in the morning and 707 in the evening. Uh, as we lift up that verse in Matthew 7, 7, asking God to, uh, to bless us as we ask, as we seek, and we knock, as we trust in Him to show us His way. If you need anything, once again, please let us know. We are here as a church family to help 
one another and just be in contact with me and we will help you. I want you to continue to pray, of course, as I know that you are, for who's your one as you pray daily for them, as you uplift them uh, at all times before God, that you can have that opportunity to, uh, to share with them and to speak with them and to minister to them. And as you do that, I know that God will give the increase. And as I said, today we want to honor our graduates with a special video. Thank you. And now, if you would, join with me in a prayer for them. Dear God, our precious Father, I thank you for these young men and women and for their lives and how much they mean to us as we have watched them grow and learn and mature. And Father, they are now taking this major step in their lives, graduating from high school and graduating from college, and the world is there before them. But Father, I thank you as we know that they are not alone, that you will guard and guide their footsteps, that you will cling to them as they cling to you. I pray your blessing on them for the plans that you have for their lives and for, for what they will accomplish in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue to surround and hold and keep them. May your light shine upon them, guarding and guiding their path. And Father, we just thank you uh, for what they will do for you in their lives. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. If you will then, uh, Rodney, let's continue with our first hymn. Let's sing, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go. Thank you. 
to 335, Standing on the Promises. But to remember that you, uh, that you can't sit on the premises. You have to stand at the premises. Uh, uh, somewhere like that as I think about that. But uh, again, uh, thank you all. We're going to have a, a very special song this morning from our choir. Uh, so pray for them and listen as they bless you and bless God.
beautiful, beautiful song. I pray that promise uh, for your life that you will continue to seek Him as never before. And the Bible promises that if you will, that He shall be found of you. So continue to pray and to seek and ask God's guidance in your life and for those around us. This morning, as I said, is graduation Sunday. And so I thought I would address our graduates as well as each and every one of us. The title of the sermon is, How Am I to Make It in This Pandemic World I Am In? Is There Any Hope for Me? And so I hope as graduate, graduates uh, you realize this is a difficult time. Uh, but if you would uh, pray with me as, as we look at uh, 1 John chapter 4 and, uh, and well, no, yeah, first, no, yes, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. I just turned to the wrong place in my Bible. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let me read that again. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's pray. Father, again, I thank you for this glorious day as we have gathered here together as the body of Christ. We are at different places, but we know that you are with us. I thank you that you not only hear, but you answer our prayers. And today we cry out to you. I cry out to you for our graduates. Father, as we well know that they are entering into the world, which uh, is so much different for all of us. And yet I pray that they know and they rest assured that you are with them and you are with us. I ask you to move as never before, as, as your, your love and your forgiveness just pours out upon our lives. I ask if there's one here that is listening, dear God, that needs to accept you as Lord and Savior, that they will surrender their lives to you today and receive the forgiveness and the assurance uh, that they need uh, to be able to survive in this world and as, as they draw close to you. Bless this time together, dear God, and we'll give you the praise, the honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As I said, you know, yay, you might have said, I've graduated. I got all that behind me after all these years of work and effort and time and getting up and running and things. I've made it. I am now a graduate. And then you might look around and say, but what have I graduated into? What kind of future could I possibly have in this world that's in a grip of a worldwide pandemic? Never before have I had to face this or any of us have had to face this. What kind of job could I possibly get? What is college going to look like? Is there any hope for me? These are all real questions. And you probably have already asked them. And I know that these questions and more are on the minds of our graduates. And probably on the minds of each and every one of us. As we look at this world and how much that it has changed and what is going on, the limitations that are upon us and things that are happening. And with the shape that this world is in, is there any hope? And I want you to know today, without a shadow of any doubt, without any cause of hesitation, Yes, there is hope. There is hope in the name of Jesus Christ. These, I want, today I want to look at three promises and there are so very many more that God gives us. That he gives us through Jesus Christ that we can have hope, that we can have peace, that we can have a brighter tomorrow if we will just trust in him. 
The first truth and promise I wanted to learn about today, about is there any hope for me, is the scripture verse that we just read in 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. As a child of God, there is no situation that you can find yourself in that God has not already overcome. As graduates, you need to hold fast to that hope in Him as all of us do. The world may seem to be in quite a mess. But God says, take heart, I've overcome the world. Your graduation was not what you had planned. Your summer is not what you had planned. The job market is not what you had planned. Your plans, I can probably guarantee you, are not what you planned. All of this is what is in the world and what it has to offer. And God says that he is greater than all of that. God says that he is in control of all of that. That he is in charge. And that he has overcome the world situations that are there. And we can take heart in that. Your plans may have changed. Not even may, they, they, they just have. I'm, I'm sure of that. And they need to be reevaluated. But I want you to understand that God's plan for your life is and always will be rock solid. His plans and his purpose for you have never changed. And they have never altered even in the least little bit. God did not wake up to this pandemic and say, oh my goodness, now what am I going to do? I've got to figure out something different. No, he was already ahead of this. He knew what was going on. And he promised us to take both the bad and the good and work them for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. That's the hope that we can have in him. Before the foundation of the world, God had a plan for your life. And this pandemic cannot and will not change God's plans now or at any time. If you will just trust in him, that's where the hope is. I can guarantee you that the plans in my life never included me coming down with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. There are many of you that went through that with me, and I'm not going to go into all of that just to sort of bring you up to speed, is that there is not a stage five. Well, stage five is being in the ground. But through God's grace and his mercy and his love, he brought me through that part of my life. November the 8th of 2010, I was declared cancer-free. And now, here we are in May of 2020, and I'm standing on my feet before you. I did not plan on that. Lisa did not plan on that. This church did not plan on that. But God had a plan and a purpose for that in my life. And the struggle was real and the struggle was hard. And it was a very, very difficult time in all of our lives. But God brought me through. And now he has allowed me to minister to other people in ways that I could not even imagine as his plan for me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now the second promise to learn about, is there any hope for us, is nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Turn, if you will, to Romans chapter 8, and uh, beginning in verse 38. I had to smile this week as somebody told me they liked having the online services because they could put me on hold and pause, and then they could look up the Bible scripture and then turn me back on, and they would be, be right there. I never thought about that, but, uh, but that's, that would be a good thing to do. But Romans chapter 8 and verse 38 says, For I am persuaded 
that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Think about that. Now, all of this plan stuff that God has for me, you might be saying, is great. But how can I know that it is truly there? How do I know that it will last? How, uh, how do I know that it will not just be there one day and gone the next? How do I know that it's just not something that is temporary? I mean, you know, now that I've graduated, this is real. You know, this isn't something I'm just reading about or dreaming about. I have graduated from high school and from college. And the real world, as they say, is out there before me. And I need something that I can hold on to. I need something that will never change. I need to be able to have something that I can trust and that I can build upon. I'm starting a new chapter in my life, Brother Razor. This is somewhere that I have never been before it is new ground and from this point forward I need to know that God is going to be there for me no matter what I'm not being selfish or things or whatever these are just these are the feelings I have and I I feel like that's probably the questions that you are asking and that you're trying to figure out as you look into this world and that goes the same for all of us as our lives have been turned upside down by this pandemic and the things that are going on, what is it that we can really trust? What is it that we can really build upon? Because this pandemic is one thing, and it is a big thing. But you know, as graduates, you have your whole life ahead of you. How do you know, how can I know, that I'm going to make it from one day to the next. Look back at Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Just go a couple of verses ahead of that. How do you know that it can be there? The Bible says, Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Paul writes, You know, what could possibly separate you from the love of Christ? And I want you to listen to this listing of what he says. Shall tribulation? Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. None of these can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ and his plan for your life. Tribulation can't do it. Distress can't do it. Persecution can't do it. Or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. And if Paul was writing in today, he would say, or a nationwide, worldwide pandemic cannot separate you from the love of God. It says, verse 36 says that it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, no, he says, that does not happen. In all these things, we are even more than conquerors through him that loved us. See, when you're wondering about what is going on in your life and what you're going to be able to do, God says, you're not only, I've not only conquered these things, I've even more than conquered them. I've destroyed them. I've annihilated them. They are no more. The one thing that remains is the love of God and his hand upon your life. And all these things are things in the world that are going around. And so then he changes his course as we already read in verse 38. And he talks about everything else. Things of this world and things even not of this world. Verse 38 he says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or nor things to come, neither height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he could have just kept on going and going and going, and so could I. But I think you've seen the point. No matter what is going on in this world, no matter what situation that you are facing, no matter what shall happen to you now or in the future, it may not be easy. I did not want to have cancer. But God will bring you 
through. One of the things I've always said and I've always loved to be able to do, and I'm looking at you right now, is I could, can see your faces. And especially as graduates, you can look at this church and you can see all kinds of people and ages and jobs and situations. And it wouldn't matter who you walked up to. They would be able to share with you how God has brought them through the hard times and the difficult times and how he has blessed them. As graduates, you have living proof of those who have made it in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you ever, ever forget that. Fairview Church stands as a living testimony to the power of God to work his plan and his purpose. And he's done it before and he will do it again and he will not stop doing it. He is there for you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God is greater than anything in this world. So now the question is, how can I then have this rock-solid assurance in my life? What do I need to do right now so that I can have these promises in my life? And that's the third promise we need to learn about. Is there any hope for me? Is that you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. These promises and many more are yours in Jesus Christ. As graduates, you need to look to Jesus and he will see you through any and all times in your life. Pandemic or not, trust in him, believe in him. Turn your life over to him. And these promises and all of those that are in this book will be yours. That's what you need to do. Realize that you cannot make it on your own. Confess your sins and be set free by his unconditional forgiveness in your life. Accept him into your life. And let his plan give you love and hope and joy and a purpose that you never thought that could be possible as you would graduate into this world you need to place your life in the hands of Jesus Christ and he promises that greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world he promises that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ and he asks you to, to accept his promise that if you will believe in him that he will forgive you of your sins and give you eternal life. That's the hope that you have in this world. This pandemic cannot stand against the love of Jesus Christ. Hold on to him and he promises that you will be more than overcomers. Right now, right now where you are, you can bow your head and ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Bow your head and ask him for the forgiveness of your sins. Bow your head and, and, and tell him that you will trust him and that you will live for him. Your prayer doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be heartfelt. Truly believe. And God promises that he will take your life and use it for you. And Christian, Let's live out these promises in our lives. Let's let them show in every word and every action that we have and we do. Let's let the world know around us that we believe in Jesus Christ and he is our solid rock and he will get us through as you cry out to him. Do that this day and God promises that he will take you and keep you in his care. Let's pray. Dear God, our precious Heavenly Father, I thank you for knowing that these promises are true. Knowing that you are greater than anything that is in this world. Knowing that your power and that your love overcomes all things and nothing can separate us from your love. 
And knowing that if we will just believe and confess our sins, that you promise to take us and to claim us and to keep us with your plan and with your purpose. I pray for those who have prayed that prayer this day, that you will come into their lives and that you will make them brand new. And Father, we pledge this day that with every breath that we take, that we will live and that we will do and that we will serve you in faithfulness, obedience, and love, that your kingdom may grow and increase forevermore. Thank you again. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen.